on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast. Uh, you got to be intentional. I'm telling you, this is a great episode. Daniel. And you got to sign up for the Arms Army program, dropping 6923. Facts. Yeah, just don't fuck around in business because it'll come back to bite you. Mm. Don't fuck around and don't waste anyone's time. You're going to hear from some real life experience of like the uh, world's trying to bone you, but minimize your bonage. Facts. Go to the show. <laughs> Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy, Corey G. That is Small Arms Danny at Trace Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Sam Adams Fine Beer. And we and still, what? uh, Manscaped, right? Are we still Manscaping? Dude, the Manscaping all the time. Okay, okay. Just yeah. making sure. Danny? Take care of yourself. And uh, use the code Small Arms. Small Arms with a Z to get 20% off. I, you know what? Free. I've been typing it in with an S this whole time. You know, what, that's, that's, that's like, you know what? That's, <laughs> a, you know what? That's a rookie move, and that's someone who doesn't pay attention and is not a part of the arms army. Would, yes. they would probably type S, but I think everyone who follows us and knows that it's always with the Z. And speaking of which, Lob pass. So shout out to us again. Shout out, shout out to us, us yes. right here. Uh, by the time yeah. they're listening to this, it will be two days out from the official thirty days of thirty inch arms arms program yes. dropping by the arms army six nine twenty three. Six nine, literally, like again, this is like a sign from the heavens. Yeah, because God has big arms. Like the arms Six army nine. is taking over the world. That a flex Friday just so happens to be Six on nine. the greatest day of the year. The Six stars nine. are aligning. It uh, stars are aligning. Yes. We have a star-studded cast of yeah. features. Features on the you know this mixtape of the thirty days of thirty inch yeah. arms. Well, uh, along those lines of the 6.9 launch, I was uh, looking for dividend yields on certain stocks today, mm. and me and Joe were talking, and I was like, the TFC stock we were looking, it was like 6.69% dividend yield. Mm. Immediate I was like, buy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like this, is, That's a <laughs> this is a sign from somebody. This stock yeah. fucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It does fuck, I believe, yeah. Danny. Yeah. That yeah, well, anyway, keep going hilarious. with your shit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, yeah, the stock TFC, it's like a, a bank or whatever, and they, uh, they're down like 20 bucks. They pay a big dividend, but it was 6.69%. Wow. That's really What good. a morning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I felt like I'm probably going to make that call today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on? Cole, what do you got going on? What, tell um, tell us about your contracting situation. Yeah, so this is like a I was thinking like this could, this could be a great topic just for overall. No, how it, it, to it operate is. Business, it is how to yes. operate in business. Yes. So all right, so from the few episodes ago, we went over that I bought a house. Yeah. Congrats. By the way, gonna fucking get in there. Plan is living it for a few years, rent it out. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Start. Step the one is got to renovate it. Mm. The house basically hasn't been updated since the fucking. Since it was built, basically there was. When was it built, Cole? Like, you know, like fifty-five. Okay, so like that. Right. So fifty-five, but in its like structurally, everything's great. Yeah. It just needs a facelift. Yep. The kitchen cabinets are still like metal, like they're OG, haven't never been touched. Damn. So first, but floor, honestly, when you buy a property, that's uh, the facelift is the easiest, easiest, and things. it's going to add immediate value, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so operation step one was get the house secured the house step two was fix this bitch yes so you know going through that process my realtor um she was awesome by the way had a real estate baller basically who had been working on flips and stuff like that who had been working with this contracting crew which was cool i had no ties to him but i trusted this guy this dude was balling he said he really liked him good work whatever so they come in <clears throat> and this was about two weeks ago and also during this entire thing i'm basically kind of on the time crunch because i have like a few months overlap of basically until august when i have to get out of my apartment lease mm -hmm. to go into this yeah, you're trying house. to time a bunch of so shit I'm to, yeah i'm trying to time it up to where basically we walk in it's basically a brand new house yeah sick. don't have to worry about anything so this guy comes in and pulls up and he just immediately walks in you could tell he's like laser focused like he's about his business taking measurements flying through everything he's like yeah we can do this, do all this stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah, this guy seems like he's fucking in it. Like, this is going to be sick. And this guy's got, like, a whole crew of guys. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm thinking, like, man, they might come in here and knock this out. Then he, uh, he's like, yeah, I mean, something like this might take, you know, six to eight weeks, blah, 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 blah. He's like, I'll put together an itemized thing. I'll send you over the price. We can get going. 
I'm like, all right, sick. Fuck yeah. Like this is about to be fucking rap. Yeah. And then, you know, three days go by, nothing. You know, five days, seven <laughs> days, two weeks go by. And I'm still waiting. He's like, I'm still waiting on prices. And then finally yesterday, we basically hit on one again. I'm like, I'm like, all right, bro. Gave you a whole fucking other weekend, Memorial Day, whatever. You got this shit? No. Basically folded and basically fucking wasted all of our time of waiting and basically saying, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to take on this job. Like, motherfucker, you just couldn't have told me that two weeks ago. But found a solution, immediately got that call. I'm thinking, you know what? This guy fucking sucks. This guy sucks at business. Fuck that guy. Yep. So then I, but he acted like he was ultra sweet. That's the funny part. Acted like he was ultra sweet. The guy, so the guy who, uh, was, is the real estate baller. Super awesome dude. He was just like basically saying like this guy, he's worked on my property. He's legit. So I trusted him and basically, yeah, it was, it didn't work. Yeah. It just didn't work. And it was like the complete, like basically like you fucking just wasted our time. Like if you'd have just came in off the gates and just said, yo, listen, we got some other stuff coming up. I'll see if I can get this in. If not, then yeah. whatever. And three days later, just at say, least, look, man, it's not for me. Yeah. Because this guy was basically like, he was all in. And then finally, like, you just waste all of our time and just not even do it. So it was just like a, a number one, like, don't operate fucking business like that. Either say, either come in and be honest and like yes. truthful and say, listen, I can, I'll try to do this, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. And not like basically commit. I had the same thing just happen with the patio shit. Yeah. So I had some guy come in, guns a blazing to give me a quote, you know, came in like the next day or whatever. And then like, I'm literally trying to fucking pay this guy like thousands of dollars or whatever. He comes out, tells me like, this is what we can do, blah, blah, blah. I'll get you the price and I'll send you over a link so you can see like what finishes or whatever you, you want. And I'm like having to pry information out of this guy. Cause I'm just like an afterthought when it comes to his business. Cause yeah. like, it's not like his primary mode of business or whatever. And then he straight up, he gives me a $5,000 range and I'm like, this is not helpful whatsoever. And then I, I was just waiting to see what he'd do. And then he just totally, totally ghosted me. Nothing. And yeah. I'm just like, dude, why can't you just, just tell me like, it's fine if you don't have the bandwidth, but like, yeah, I get it. Totally. Yeah. See, all right. So I, I'm going to this. And again, this is like my first house renovation thing. So this guy is basically saying he's got a crew. He's going to say it takes six to eight weeks after all this bullshit. I'm number one. I'm like, I'll probably literally never do business with that guy again. I told the guy who basically connected with us that he was like, I'm pulling this guy away from other projects I had lined up. Mm-hmm. Like this is just overall just shitty business to deal yeah. with period. Well, cause it makes that dude look bad. Exactly. Exactly. Which that guy was awesome. All yeah. parties involved besides this contractor. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, but here's the thing. As soon as I get that news, I'm in a fucking time crunch. There's no time to fucking cry about it. First thing I do is probably do what I should have done and to get the homie Mitch Lore. Homie network. To immediately, it was literally within 30 minutes. I called Mitch. He's coming to check it out. And now it's going to be done in like two or three weeks. Correct. So I, sh- this is like another like rule. Basically, always do business with your homies because you yeah, can trust them. Especially if you can trust them, you know Mitch is gonna probably make some money, but not try to overkill you. It's all it should be on the up and up, reasonable quality work. I mean, at the end of the day, that's why we create this network. So that's why we, me and you talked about this the other day with one of the our mutual friends. There's thinking about working with you. Like, if we're just like reaching out like that then it's like everyone, as long as everybody's on the up and up, like you can just keep doing quality business and you know, you're going to get instead of having this dude coming in. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. And well, the whole thing of like why I didn't go with Mitch in the first place was I was thinking that it's just Mitch and one of his other partners that it might with all that I wanted to do. Mm. I don't know if they would have the bandwidth to basically have it done. Yeah. But it turns out it's completely the fucking opposite way. Basically Complete the opposite because Mitch comes to like, no, we'll like just only do this. Like we'll fucking yeah, they'll, they'll be prime. straight, straight up. You where, know how it is Cole. Like when I didn't really realize how long it takes you to make certain things. Yeah. Until you, until they, until the person that has the skill can explain to you, really the time or the effort or yeah. like the understanding it's hard because you just assume, well, if it's only two guys, this guy's got seven guys, yeah. but they're doing seven other jobs. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's so that's good. That's all good advice. The whole thing. You got Brian who's painted the whole max office to come out. <laughs> Brian's painted out. everything I, so, I have yeah. painted. <laughs> I just wish this guy would have told me he wasn't going to do it two weeks ago. Yeah. So even yesterday uh, we were walked back in the other office that we we're building and I looked at Brian. I was like, yeah, I probably need to paint that ceiling like charcoal. He's like, 
Well, it looks like I'm not getting in here before they're getting in here. So <laughs> I got that. G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian is the Brian and Will who did a bunch of stuff here too. When we first came, who built this, this room, like there's, there's a couple homies out here that can just do whatever we need done. I yeah. mean, at the end of the day. And like, again, this goes back to what we always talk about is that like, if you go to someone for like one time for something like this, you'll continuously get referrals because yes. that's like such a specialized thing. People want to work with people yeah. who, like, you know, they trust them. Like, their friends trust them, mm -hmm. you know? I feel like the whole contracting industry gets a bad rap right off the bat, like, being flaky and shit. Yeah. And, like, because then on the flip side of my recent experience, I uh, it was, like, a super, like, small team, blue collar, like, five to six guys, five to six guy crew or whatever. They came out. They were, like, drawing sketches with me. Yeah. talking me through they were it. the complete opposite yeah they were yeah. like oh you want your stairs to look like this or like this like how far do you want the step down like do you want a rectangle or do you want a square blah 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 and i'm like sitting there, i'm like hmm, this is interesting and it was all done in like a timely fashion or whatever and then <clears throat> when they were finishing up i'm like hey man as long as this like holds up and it like looks fucking awesome like i'll you know send any business your way as possible and then exactly. the next day my neighbor came out next door neighbor and was like Wow, that really turned out great, and and then sh and long story short, what happens. long story short, he fucking called him yesterday, and I texted the guy. I was like, "Hey, just let you know, mm -hmm. dude's gonna next door neighbor's gonna reach out," and he's like, "It was super like over the moon appreciative." So that's See, how you do it, yeah. That's why, like a long time ago, I was like every person which initially came to my studio that I could make a walking billboard. That was my whole thing: over deliver try to whatever order they put in i want to lose 20 i want to lose 10 i'm trying to get faster stronger whatever like if i can help them achieve that they're going to undoubtedly tell other people about me for sure it's you're how building to, a web <laughs> you're building a web and so it's like i don't know how people don't think that way when they're doing business like they think oh well fuck, you know that didn't work out whatever but they don't realize like you're on a podcast talking about it you don't know who the fuck you're dealing with yeah you know what I mean? So it's like you got to always understand that that's what it is. Like, Do you think it's just like the short term versus long term? Yeah, just like 100%. the money grab? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Money grab and like, yeah, maybe your project or your project was inconvenient for some reason. But what they don't understand is if that dude just tells you within three days, you know what? This is just not for me or the timing's not right. I don't want to yeah. waste your time. You'd still not have I, a bad thing to say. I, yeah, I would probably yeah. go back to him at some other point exactly. if I needed to. Because your first but now it's like it's z it's zero. Because your it's first impression was that he was like legit. Yeah. So he had an opportunity to still keep that impression and then not waste your time. What people need to understand is like the time waste for people that understand how valuable their time is is one of the worst things you can do of all time. Like yeah. when I think somebody is knowingly wasting my time. You are fucked. I am not ever going to fuck with you. Like, like people, people that don't think that way think it's crazy because they don't value themselves like I do. Motherfucker, I know how much I'm worth. If you're wasting my fucking time, go get fucked. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just the truth. If you are below the line on a regular basis and you are wasting my time, we are fucking not friends. And I am not dealing with you. And I will cut you out faster than I cut anyone just so I can get to the person that is going to value my time and is going to be like a positive. Like people don't get that. Like motherfuckers that get that understand it, bro, that they're out. Like yeah. I'm not about to operate that way. And if you're listening to this and you don't operate that way, you should think about operating that way. Yeah. Because think about all the motherfuckers we have weeded out in the network, the people we work with and think about how shit runs now. And why are we doing so good? Yeah. It just, it's what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the chess game of, oh, this player don't work. This move don't work. You know, put the one in that's, it's just next man up. That's got better skills. It's, it's what it is. So I think it's yeah. a good lesson. Cole. I like it. No, it was a good lesson. Always do business with the homies. Yeah. For now sure. the flip side is sometimes homies can let you down and that's kind of weird. So it's yeah. like, but if you have upfront communication though, I think that that's a big part of it, right? Yeah, the communication <clears throat> was, is the biggest piece, honestly. It is the biggest piece. And, like, because, stuff. like, real recognize, real, like, you can tell if someone's, like, really, like, if if someone was actually busy, like, they would probably just fucking tell you, hey, I'm super busy. Yeah. Because they're not trying to fucking waste their time either. No. So. Dude, whenever uh, I had a contractor come and bid out my upstairs, that's, like, the only thing I haven't redone at my house. 
he literally one set a meeting a month uh, away because he didn't have time when he came he was extremely thorough probably a little bit on the pricier side and at that time i didn't want to do all that but he just said like i'll requote it at a different time if it's not the right time i need to know by a certain time it was so professional and it was so far out and so done well that it almost made me like I, I'm going back to him to get it requoted because I'm willing to pay more because if just the way he operated to this point is an indicator of what it's going to look like when it's done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's that, that stuff will never be bad if you operate like that. And, and you're and he was super respectful of, of the time and it, it was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. And he obviously was a busy, uh, successful dude, or at least that's my perception. Cause that's what I'm getting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I think this leads directly into like just like business and life in general as far as like establishing expectations and systems. So maybe yeah. that's something we can transition yeah, sure. to. I don't know. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. If you hear that buzzing in the background, that is the actual lawnmower. Okay, back to the script. Who is the best in men's below the waist grooming? Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Hear that mm. buzz? Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the performance package. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. And we have an exclusive offer for you. 20% off in free worldwide shipping with the code, and you guessed it, small arms. Not small wiener, small <laughs> arms. Right. S-M-A-L-L-A-R-M-Z. Z as in Zaddy, as in Danny, Zaddy Daddy. 20% off, free worldwide shipping, small arms at manscaped.com. Hear that buzz? That could yeah. be you. That's Cole. right. And listen, I just got to tell you, this is one of the products that I wish I would have had earlier in my life because, yes. you know, as a young Padawan, a nice youngling. The jungle you know, down there. Sometimes, you know, with the inexperience and stuff like that, you know, I would I would nick myself. It'd be a mess. It would hurt real bad. It might bug me for a few days. Yep. But you know what? This is one of the products that I wish I would have had. So the lawn, uh, like uh, Danny, what's inside the package? Please. I mean, the days of being a Padawan for grooming are over. Yes. Cole, right. So it's time to take your your ball grooming and your grooming overall to the next level. So yes. how, how we do that with the uh, you know the lawnmower, <laughs> the lawnmower four point it's, it's it's a um, it's a waterproof grooming tool. Ooh. And it's an easy cleanup. So really? Nice. So you're benefit. telling me that instead of standing over the toilet in like a weird crouched position and potentially <laughs> like nicking my like my taint, I can use this in the shower and now like Michaela won't come in and be like, whoa, why is there a like why does it look like a jungle in here? Why is your whenever taint I out? could just use it in the shower and it goes down the drain? Is that what you're saying? Hundred percent right. Yes. Wow. I can't wait. Put your taint away. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. What's Trayvon? Got, Trayvon? <laughs> Listen, okay. Once you get done harvesting the, all those crops though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got I got a crop I got some preserver and a reviver here for you. Okay, oh, nice. so me personally, I really struggle sweating down there. It get it's like a swamp. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So talk to first him, of Trey. all in your gift pack, you're gonna get a manscaped boxer brief. Oh, These things nice. are gonna keep you cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Definitely gonna enhance the package. But once you get done though, pull out the ball toner. Oh. Tone them. <laughs> tone them up. You gotta tone them crops up. <laughs> tone them crops up. No more sweating down there at all. It's gonna save your life, man. Save I like a it. Swamp ass. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. save your life. Uh, That's right. Put your taint away. Oh, and honestly, from what Trey sounds like, it sounds like after, you know, you get your experience with the lawnmower 4.0 and everything Manscaped has to offer, it sounds like you're going to become a, a professional farmer. Uh, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. I mean, that's what it seems yeah. like. You yeah. reap Padawan to, to groom master. That's right. I'm yeah. basically Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, that's what I'm saying. So, gee, what's, no so, what again, what's the code for the listeners? If you want to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, the performance packs <laughs> package <laughs> – Join over 7 million men worldwide. Trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code, and you guessed it, small arms. That's right. With a Z, Zaddy. At manscaped.com. Right. We're right. out of here. The uh, yeah, systems I'm struggling well, on. <laughs> Let's. So, yeah, the expectations and systems. This is why, like, every first call – or any first thing where you're trying to set a meeting, like let's say you get a meeting with someone or you're about to set one up, the person who you're setting up a meeting with as you as the professional needs to come in with basically a checklist of shit that you need basically. Mm. Like you need to know, ask these specific questions so you get this type of feedback so both of you guys are on the same page. Yeah. And on the opposite side, 
the if you're getting like interviewed for something you should have like your shit together too mm-hmm. of exactly what the, like what you can expect from them yeah also yeah. so that that would be in this case like what's the turnaround time how fast can you get here what's your crew like Blah, yeah. blah, like blah 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 all that stuff well and you guys are doing a lot of this type of stuff with the nft project trey is there anything that you ran into or like things that like when you're interviewing people for certain things that you're looking for like just along these kind of lines mm-hmm. not that i can think of like specifically within that prod like in the project but yeah. like when i think about like what cole was saying like with the systems like having those systems in place like so you that you are productive like i think like just like the biggest thing is like like preparation yeah. having all that shit prepared so like you know then like when someone comes to you for something business like you already know that you can do that and you already know you already have like an idea in your head how long it's going to take you how you're going to get how you're going to reach that goal and everything and i think that's like a big issue that a lot of people come into is like they they like they have the goal that they want but they don't necessarily like want to prepare themselves or even put a plan in place Mm -hmm. then to like achieve that goal the other thing is, <clears throat> which I recommend, this is kind of along the same lines, I recommended to Treadway when he's doing a little bit of consulting stuff, was I, like, don't bite off seven things. Like, bite off one or two things. Mm-hmm. Execute them. Yeah, and then it. see the And kill it. And then see the bandwidth. Because the other thing is, back to kind of our original point of, like, my understanding of what it takes all of you guys to do certain things because I don't do it isn't all the way proper. Because I don't know. I don't do that, right? <clears throat> so it's like, and, and that's how everyone operates. That isn't what they do. They don't know. They think, I want these seven things done. It should be done in 30 days. They don't realize that's like a half a year. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, I think when you're the provider of the service or the skill, you saying, let me attack this and this. These are my wheelhouse. Let me crush it to trays. Try to get it fast and quality, which you guys all do well. Then it's like, let's talk about the other pieces. Because then the expectation is set to the person you're working with. You hopefully over deliver on the initial expectation, which makes them value your time and want you to do those other projects. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, it's like a, it's like setting yourself up for success, not failure. And I think a lot of people get so excited to go, I got it all. Yes, I can do it. Yeah. Let me take on these 15 to 20 different things (laughs) that might take and let's try to get it done in 30 days. Sounds awesome. Yeah. But sometimes the person that's giving those things doesn't know the required time because they don't do that action. So it's like, I think you as a professional have to set, like, even when people come to the gym back in the day, I want to lose, you know, 50 pounds. And I'm like, are you prepared to do that? Like be dedicated for probably like six months. Could we do it faster? Maybe. But like, this is like a lifestyle change. Like it might take us a year, but it probably won't come back on. So it's like, I would even set expectations. And it's funny because even yesterday with SDC, our manufacturer, I'm like, hey, I want to get a uh, plant protein. And they're like, they're rushing it because the busy diet's doing so good. But it's like they said Friday, but then came back and said, well, actually, maybe Wednesday. But fr- but Friday. So it's like setting expectations. They're buffering it a couple days, right? Because mm-hmm. they want to deliver. So it's like there's always a – it's a better way to operate. I just think sure. that you're yeah. setting yourself and up for success. Always, I tell you Wednesday. And, and then, if you always – And it's going to come Friday. <laughs> the buffering of time, if you say it's going to take – let's say it does take a month yeah. and you can get it done in two weeks. Massive. Like that's just a huge win because the other person already has that expectation. They can expect it within a month. Yes. You're giving yourself time to work. If other shit pops up. Yep. For sure. And then if they, and then if you give it early, it's like, Oh fuck yeah. Over delivery. That's over delivery. That's the cheat code for over delivery. <laughs> it's a cheat code, it, yeah. it's but, like but it's a not a win for everybody. It's a win for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you're saying I can do this quality action in this time frame. If Mitch came to you, you, this other guy said eight weeks and said four weeks. Yeah. And Mitch gets it done in three and a half. How pumped are you? I'm going to be fucking, yeah, super excited. <laughs> or if in two weeks, Mitch says, hey, Cole, this is fucking bigger than I thought. It's probably going to take me five. At yep. least the expectation. Yeah. You it's see cool. what I'm saying? Open communication. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Is, I think this is good shit. Yeah. The real time example too is with like Anthony, like just doing his website, like the, like listing out like what we needed from him like yeah that was like he's been like perfect to work with with that because then he just vomited it all back at us Homie but then network. like setting the expectation again was like super yeah. helpful for him to like understand it's like, really exciting to work with people that you know could even be like more elite at what they do if they had some systems around and then with your y'all skill set too and he's willing Oh, he's a That's fucking, the best he's part, a beast, yeah. bro. I fuck with Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Stay hated motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love it. Definitely not small. No, but the thought process of just all of these things we touched on, 
is part of the actual like chess game of business and life and strategy that a lot of people are completely unaware that's happening yeah. completely unaware and then they wonder why it's not working and so like those things are interesting to me because when I run into somebody that is clearly missing most of this stuff and clearly doesn't have any clue about it mm -hmm. and it's like and you explain it like that could literally change the entire trajectory of your business like like that yeah. it's like your life yeah yeah, it's it's here's what it is. It's piling bad decisions versus piling good decisions because these are bad decisions. That guy leaving you hanging like that's a bad decision. Then yeah, he goes to the next guy and eventually no matter how good you're doing, you pile enough of those. Your momentum is going the other direction because you're just doing a bunch of shitty stuff. Yeah. And then this one might take a little bit longer. But to my, I've had people walking out here telling people I helped them lose weight and look better since 1999, bro. Where has that got me? It's just a fucking piling on testimonial off test. You just, it's long game. It's, it's better strategy. It's just, honestly, I think it's just kind of like being a good dude. It is. It's just being a good human being. Yeah. Honestly. Like after hearing Schlegel, like just being dudes, good dudes and gals. Yeah. It's really what it's like. <laughs> but see the, all right. So the whole thing that I take away from this is, which I kind of want to, you know, tap myself on the shoulder. Please it's just, brush it it's off. Just, it's just how, <laughs> how ingrained it is in me and probably all of us is to just automatically go into find a solution. It's like, I like I'm that. not fucking getting tripped on that. This guy fucking Fuck yeah. sucks. There's nothing I can do about that. What am I going to do? Stay here fucking another two weeks and cry because this guy basically, I heard you say that uh, a like, couple of days fuck, ago. Like yeah. what the fuck am I going to do? No, you just solution. immediately, find a solution like everything i dropped everything else is like i need to do this it's the most important where's the solution at? you think that the that right there that in a nutshell is like a big growth point that you're proud of cole is that what you're kind of yeah, like i just think it's you just, should be and, and and anyone who like because it could be like as simple as like your fucking car breaks down or you're, you got a flat tire it doesn't fucking like what are you gonna do? Cry? Yeah, lay like, that just that, lay that just quit. Yeah, but well, yeah, what are you gonna do? Just lay here and not drive my car and basically fucking woe is me? No, you just literally yeah. gotta go in to find a solution. It's yeah. the next thing. And it goes back to uh the dude who was I forget his name. Nick Vitula? Nick Yep. <laughs> the world's trying to bone you. But don't yeah. let him bone you. <laughs> Minimize your bonage. Minimize the bonage, yeah. Did you tell a story? Oh about, yeah. So, so he messaged Cole. Yeah, long time listeners, uh, you know, fans of the pod. Uh the, what's his name again? Nick Vitula. Nick Vitula randomly messaged me on Facebook the other day and <laughs> basically said, it's so hey, and I don't even know. He said he was listening to the episode. He, when the fuck he, was the last time we talked about this? Oh, like, a long, long time ago. He so, must've just been in the archives. Kid. Yeah. He must've Jeez. just been listening to all of them basically. Yeah. And he said, Hey, I just want to know, like, I'm the guy who said to minimize your bonage. And like, that's hilarious that you guys are still talking about that. So good. Yeah. And I basically told him it's like the most wisest words I've ever heard in my life. We need to have him on the show. He yeah. comes, he comes to Granville from time to time for business. I don't know where he lives now, but he literally said it so nonchalant that day in the gym. He was one of our 10 members we had at the original old school. Like, you know, you know, Corey, whole world's trying to bone you. I'm it just is. trying to minimize the bonage. I go this guy, I go over here and I try to get this deal and that guy's trying to bone me. I go over, this is literally what he said. I go over here to buy this. They're trying to bone me. Fucking everybody's trying to bone me and I'm trying to minimize my bonage. I was fucking true. The world's trying to bone you. Everyone's trying to bone you. so fucking good. So shout out Nick Vitula. Yeah. My favorite Italians. Yeah. <laughs> So, so good. good. And sometimes, you know, you might get boned, but it's all that matters is if you don't, if you think you didn't get boned, yeah. then it's a win. <laughs> is that how that works? Is that the don't don't get boned again? Works. different than a walk of shame after? That? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know, <laughs> Slippery slope coming. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we should definitely have Nick on the show, though. Yeah. Hey, hey what's he the, hasn't been around like 10 we, years yeah. either. It'd be hey, so good. hey, what's the uh, what's the Ted Lasso quote? Uh, be a goldfish? Mm hmm. Cause goldfish. I'm not aware of the. Cause all right, Ted Lasso. You, I know what Ted Lasso. Off, is. All right, amazing yeah. show. You should definitely I need watch, to watch it. it. Yeah. One of like the first banger quotes he basically drops is, "Okay, hey, just be a goldfish." Okay. And that's because goldfish have 10 second memories, so everything after 10 seconds they just forget. And they I mean, on to the next thing, and they basically. just keep it rolling. Yep. Mm -hmm. Short, be, be a goldfish. Short, uh, short term memory loss on in sports is like one of those things, right? Like you botch a play, bang, you just yeah. gotta go did to the you, next. Did you watch the finale last night? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. I'm not. It, like, yeah. They like kind of closed it out, and he he brought it brought, yeah. brought it back. It was kind of cool. So you know how I say like I really only, I, I really only have time for one show. Yeah. Because I'm doing abs at night. 
Just saying. Shout Grant out. they're coming. Great. Uh, Grant, yeah. I, <laughs> so my original post this morning was. That would be good. Yeah. I, I wrote. Oh, hold on. I wrote. I took it. I did, I just. I changed it a little bit. I said, I'm going to another level you should jump on. And I wrote. Or no, I started off and said, I'll take granite countertops and abs, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I mean, part of it, because Trayvon's picture was really good today. And so I was like, yeah, I'll take granite countertops. Where was I going with this? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that, oh your original you, you, post. You got, you got you one show. Yeah, oh, yeah, show. one show. Yeah, All right, yeah. so my one show, it keeps being Peaky Blinders. It's so badass. I'm on the third time. So here's what it comes <laughs> down to. I get, it's like 9 o'clock, 9.15. I'm like, all right, time to do my 200, 300 abs. And I want to watch something. And I've thought about Ted Lasso. I think about all these other shows. Succession, I do watch from time to time. But I get on Netflix, Peaky Blinders. I just feel so much more gangster after doing abs and watching Peaky Blinders. After watching that shit. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it because they're ripping cigs? Is that why? I did, like, yeah. you get some nostalgic of ripping. I things? like, yeah. I think the ripping Newports is kind of coming back. <laughs> <I think. laughs> well, it's grimy. It just makes it you is, feel grimy. I think it's because that. I love the the attire. I'm yeah. telling you, I have this weird affection towards that time frame it's of like clo- for days. clothing, yeah. <laughs> the hats. Cool. I think uh, just the fucking. And they're driving the, Bentleys. They're right? driving the Bentleys school. and fucking Bugattas, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like old, like Model T shit. Static. I think it's like because it's half mob shit. It's, just a, it's it real just, mob shit. It's like all of it, bro. And I think that that's why it's like. I also think because the show looks like our, like our hometowns, kind of. It does. It's very similar. Very easy to basically be like this is like my hometown. Yeah, it just has a lot. It has a lot of the makings of shit that I'm just like I think inherently into. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, and I'm trying to get more gangster because I want my abs look like literally absurd make Danny like nervous when he sees him. And I thought (laughs) (laughs) like he's at the microwave, he's cooking his food and he looks over and sees me and goes, I'm nervous. Why why are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Should make the high school kids look nervous. That'd be funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. I said that one yesterday whenever like the, uh, the older crouch kid was like sitting down waiting to get a set. I'm like, I looked at him and then I was like, dude, I woke up this morning. These bumps are like all over my stomach. It sucks. And they look, looked at me and I went like this and I was like, fuck. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Got him with that one. Keep doing that. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Um, Trey Ball, uh, you're back on the lunge game, right? How's oh, that, yeah. How, how's, how's that going, Trey? Um, lunges suck for – I mean, obviously, everybody knows that when you first start a new lunge streak, no matter how much you matter. lunged before, it feels yeah. like you're starting from, like, ground zero again. So I've only been doing, four, so like, 400 bad. meters, like, yeah. 400 meters or 10 minutes, and it's been, like, whooping my ass. I'm feeling a lot better now. Yeah. But, like, on, like, Monday for deadlift and Wednesday for squat, like, my legs felt, feel like, rough. tired. Probably heavy though. as yeah, fuck. Yeah, just super tired, though, yeah. It's almost like I'm embarrassed how sore I am the first week. Yeah, like no, I literally, I'll pull up to the track, right, yeah. and I'll like peel myself out of the truck. And yeah, I'm like, like it hurts to get out of the car. Like, and I'm like, the toilet. I haven't created this thing, and I can't even fucking walk. What the fuck is wrong with it me? It makes you feel soft. It makes you feel like you don't even work out. It does. Yeah, that's why no matter who you are, what level athlete you are, like I got some of these new kids. They're stud athletes. Three minutes of lunges, they're fucking smoked. Yeah, sweating, yeah. sore for five days. It just. It just changes the game. That's why when you adapt to them, you become such a boss. I think that'll help probably put your stuff over 600, I think, Trey, on your Hopefully. deadlift. That's the I, move. Yeah, that's what I figured you were doing. Yeah. You'd take that 550 to 6. I'm trying range. to deadlift 600. Dude, 600 yeah. at, at 48 glad. or 65 would be amazing, bro. Yeah. How much you weigh now? No idea. Is, you, I'm are, calling it high 150s. Yeah, probably. He I'd got a good bit of muscle. He would churn up a little yeah, bit now. High 150s, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you could still make 48 if you wanted, though. Yeah, I mean, I cut like 20 pounds like in the one week both times i made i'd had to cut it yeah so. well and with lunging you'll start to get leaner too yeah. just walking around 100 percent. yeah okay danny oh just also just if no, you're gonna go lunge, ahead, if you're gonna lunge like yeah. just actually lunge though like, oh no no shout out to your guy yeah, at the like, track just, yeah. like just do it if you're gonna do it like don't like scroll like it's Instagram really like being phone, intentional or yeah or like take or, yeah or take like steps in between so or like the dude did like he took like four steps in between and then did the same leg in a row for some reason. So yeah. good. I don't I don't know what he's soft, doing. But. Super soft. Yeah, I mean you're actually not lunging. No, you're. Yeah. A, <laughs> and again, zero like, benefit. Yeah, <laughs> like that's like some real recognized real shit. Like yeah. that's how you get like fucking basically called out. That's how yeah. you get checked real like real. Quick, I mean, basically. think about when Preston and, and Jacob got in a fight in the fucking gym. That's what I'm saying. Just un- unintentional. Yeah, I mean that's Unaware. like doing like curl like. Dumbbell curls with a yeah. belt on or something. Yeah. yeah. Or walking on the incline with a belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So bad. yeah. 
I forget what I said that day. I told you him said, to take the fucking belt off. Yeah, you <laughs> said you're not was it fucking again? walking on the treadmill. Sam, the belt. I was like, take the fucking belt off. You should have taken it outside and just lit on fire. I was I mean. so mad. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just check, motherfuckers. If you're walking on the treadmill with a fucking belt, if you're doing, I, I would also put this in there. If you're doing uh, the low cable rows with a fucking belt on, <laughs> you need to fucking check yourself. Yeah. You, you should really be wearing a belt for question uh, whether or not. For like, the big three, and that's about it. That's yeah. <laughs> There, yeah, I think in that weird, like, the one kind of wild bodybuilding culture, it's like they wear a belt for the whole thing. I'm not yeah, sure like why. Every accessory. Yeah, yeah, it like, doesn't make sense to me. But you just get, like, your core supposed to be sh- yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, that, I remember Cole looked at me and was like, he's walking on the incline with the fucking belt on. Yeah, and I, I mean, go, it was just. I was like, dude, just take the fucking belt off. Yeah, like, you can't do that here. I don't <laughs> it's like wearing here. gloves while you lift. Like, what, yeah. what are you doing? I've thrown away so many gloves over the years. It's hilarious. It should be banned. They, well, yeah, it's like really banned at the gym. But for some reason, I never thought I ever had to hang up. Like, I've only seen one pair at this gym, and it yeah. was the first week, and I threw them away. I know who they are too, and I, I felt bad, but he never brought them in again. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> the other gym, though, when we first got bigger, I would see them often. And I would, the the best ones are the ones that have like the mesh on the back. Yeah, mm. you ever seen that? Girls' ones, so good, so dude. bad. Yeah, it's like fucking bike gloves almost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's somebody listening right now going, oh, <laughs> I really need to get rid of my that's me my <laughs> lifting gloves. That's you. No, they're like, no, no, they're, no. Like, oh, they're like in the they're gym right now me. lifting. Oh, oh yeah, that's me. Yeah, oh, you're and I'm just saying, like, even it's so. What's so interesting is one of my first gym stories I remember is gloves okay and okay it's it was wearing gloves in the gym is like the ultimate sign to basically you're like a bullet board of like please make fun of me yeah like, please facts. like i'm i'm a beta <laughs> i'm not even close to being an alpha yeah like whatever i say and do you cannot take me serious that's the, yeah. what it is yeah. and one of the first gym stores i can remember is at source actually okay. there was this dude in there we used to literally call him gloves okay and this motherfucker would wear a small t-shirt Club. It was it was a rogue CrossFit T-shirt, okay. of course. It was very stereotypical. Had the gloves on and would always just be a dick. Anytime he'd see us do something, he'd come over and basically try to basically. We're like sixteen. This dude's like thirty. He's like trying to one up <laughs> us. And then, or he would like make like small things of like, um, you guys are like. He would always go, you guys are taking up too much space. We got like one fucking rack. He's over here doing CrossFit butterfly pull ups, all this wax shit. And I just remember thinking so many times, like, I would, like, fucking kill you at like, 16 <laughs> years old. So that that's, like, one of you ever first. You ever have those, like, I've had those, like, thoughts when I was, like, around that age. Like, what happens if I just hook this guy in the face real quick? Yeah. <laughs> like, do you not, like, do you I not I literally, see I know, here? that's that's probably, I let yeah. it, maybe. Like, I don't let... give a shit that you're 15 years old. I mean, no. I will fucking wreck <laughs> you right now. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. But it, it was it was good. I had no idea what happened in gloves. He's probably still wearing gloves. Yeah. But was he wearing full blown gloves? I full bl- It was a full blown gloves, of like they would have his like fucking like lifting gloves. Out. Yeah. 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 But um, always he and he would always strap them up every set. We'd sit there and just fucking make fun of him the entire time. <laughs> so I'm I'm just thinking about it. I'm 16. So imagine if you're wearing gloves right now. There's probably a 12 year old make fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> just know that. <laughs> just know that. Well, the other problem is the gym culture has changed so much. Like a lot of gyms, you can't use chalk. They Very don't true. let you use fucking, you're not allowed to bring your own bands. You're not, like it's like gym shit is just so whack out here mm-hmm. right now, bro. That's why the fuck I'm telling you the seventies shit got popular again with you guys. Mm-hmm. It's come, the cycle's coming back around for sure. It's coming back around and we're going to be ready for it because that's how we operate. Cause guess what? People go, Oh, wait a second. This shit works. I forgot yeah. about it for 15 years, and now it's back again. I feel again. yoked. Yes. <laughs> my pump is crazy, and I look good. Yeah. You know? This makes and me I like, quit wearing cock joggers. Yeah. Talk about this makes me want to do, like, some, like, <laughs> like some jail cell, like, outside, like, prison workouts. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. Like, some CT shit. Yeah. I fuck, it with, I fuck with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was part of my vision I saw this morning. The outside. The outside, yeah. So, I'll okay. tell you about that later. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else, guys? Guys, that yeah, was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. What, what are we going to call this episode? Just, I don't know. Be fucking intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. Get ready for the arm drop. 6-9-23. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, Sign up. Which, yeah. So 
major announcements here. Uh, six nine, the arm drop. Yeah, uh, we're building a new studio that you will see from time to time. You can hear some of the stuff in the background. I'm super pumped about that. Um, you guys, the the NFT project is fucking rising up right now, and my abs are getting more granite by the day. <laughs> granite D. That's yeah, right. Yeah, boy. It's a lot, a lot going on out here. All right. Go to maxevermuscle.com. Get you some pre extreme. Get you the busy diet. Drink your Sam Adams and um, have a great day. I'll see ya. <laughs> <laughs>